So we opened the shop in March of 2020. Yeah, it was very uh, challenging, not only because even though we had experiences managing a coffee shop, a coffee business, but we were first time business owners ever, right? So uh, right. there was a lot to learn from the business, like being a business owner. But then eventually when we finally opened in 14 of March of 2020, two days later, the order of the governor came for the lockdown, the shutdown of all everything. Welcome to Work Is Good, a CSM podcast. My name is Lana Buto, and I host the show with my dad, Chris Buto, the owner and president at CSM. This sh- this episode is going out on a Saturday, and is focused on branding and how to establish a strong brand. And it's a little bit different this week. Our conversation was with uh, Vinny Christensen, the one of the co-founders over at Bequest, uh, a coffee shop in Mill Creek, Washington, and. Uh, Vinny just has a really straightforward approach to how he wanted to establish his brand, and it was really just by providing a great experience for customers every time they they walk in the door. And so, really enjoyed this talk with Vinny. And um, they've they faced some obstacles over at Bequest opening up right before the government shutdowns due to COVID in March of 2020, and they just stuck through it and have grown a ton since then. Uh, so it was a really enjoyable conversation, and I hope you enjoy this episode. My name is Vinny, which just stands for Vinicius. And Vinny is just a kind of a, a, a way to make it easier for people to remember my name and to say it. Does anyone really call you Vinicius still? Uh, just my mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when, yeah. So in, uh, but yeah, so basically we all go by nicknames, me, my wife, Andy. Her name is Andressa. Uh, okay. And Lily, that is my mom. Her name is uh, Iliani. So we just try to kind of give nicknames, make it uh, easy for people to remember. And that's how we've been going by since we uh, moved to the United States. Uh, we moved from Brazil. Um, my mom moved uh, 15 years ago. Uh, and Andy and I, we just moved in 2016. And okay. When we first arrived here, uh, we wanted to improve our English because it was very uh, beginner's level. <laughs> yep. And so we figured that um, one of the good spots for us to start learning would be on a uh, customer side and coffee shops. So <laughs> that's where we found our first like job um, here in the United States was uh, as a barista is in a, in a coffee shop remind and me which which coffee shop that was i think you told me at one I, I started a victor's coffee that's right in, okay. in redmond and my wife worked at Kakitanda, which is a brazilian oh yeah yeah uh, coffee shop in uh they have a bunch of locations Kirkland. but she started in the one in uh redmond actually okay uh yeah and uh, yeah so basically that's when we discover our passion for this industry and, and the coffee business and the connections with people uh interactions and stuff and uh and after a while working there both me and her we kind of develop um good skills um and like i said a lot of uh, passion and desire to work on that so we both graduated in our business uh at the time uh, she was a manager at Kitenda and i was a manager mm-hmm. of victors and then uh the dream of one day owning our own place start little by little growing inside of us and we just start planning for for that and become like a goal to one day having uh our own shop and then in finally in 2010 2020 this this happened uh but it, which is funny because both in brazil um uh, we we're both graduated in different completely different areas um and dress and my wife she graduated in um uh like radiology which is basically x-ray and scams and stuff okay the medicine and, side yeah yeah and i graduated as a lawyer in brazil um, wow okay yeah so Didn't basically when we moved here that was one side of the thing we wanted to first improve our english go and eventually go back to school i see uh, okay and kind of uh getting our our certifications here um uh, but then is completely different from from um, 
from Brazil, so it would take a lot of money, a lot of time for us mm -hmm. to yeah. uh, do that. Basically yeah. restart. <laughs> yep. So that was definitely a downside of it, but then fortunately we were blessed enough to find a passion somewhere else, which was the connections and the coffee, and that's where we find our we found ourselves in and our career start growing on on that path and and we opened bequest that's awesome that's great and when when did you open uh so we opened the shop in march of 2020 that's right okay yeah right before so it was yeah it was very uh, challenging um not only because even though we had experiences managing a coffee shop a coffee business but we were first time business owners ever right so um, right. yeah there was a lot to learn from the business like being a business owner and covid made all that much more difficult because when we finally close on on the spot that we that we have bequest um it was february of 2020 beginning of february so covid was still something that we were thinking it would not come overseas right it would not come right to, it was something that we're talking about china whatever right so it was not a concern in anybody's mind so we just kept going with uh our plans bequests and but then eventually when we finally opened in march of 20 uh 14 of march of 2020 uh two days later the order of the governor came for the lockdown the shutdown of all everything so man that was a uh, what did you guys what, what what were you guys thinking then you, you know you were very um uh, still very naive at the time we were like we didn't know much about the rules or the laws so we were like okay we gonna we can't afford to close we're just gonna stay open until the police come and shut I us down it. i love it that's <laughs> awesome i love that good and, for uh, you guys just, yeah so um so then I know I uh, was I was one of your customers. You had to make put a mask on. So, you know, yeah. I love that spirit in you guys. Good job. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we stay open the whole time. We actually never, never closed the business. Um, we I remember we would put a table outside and we were trying to approach uh, people that were walking by the neighborhood mm -hmm. like on and, and that street and try to offer them free samples of coffee, a flyer with our menu, and uh, and basically was only to go orders at the time. Because right after that, restaurants were basically classified as essentials, right? So they could stay open if they want, mm -hmm. but they could not have anybody in. So I remember we took out all of our, all of our seating and we're basically just taking to go orders, have helping people at the front counter and, and getting to go, but then, the community was awesome. They, uh, the word of the mouth starts spreading, and the uh, on the technological digital way, because no one was seeing nobody, so they were all um, locked at home. So, right. but then people would walk in and say, "Oh, my coworker talked about this coffee shop on the Zoom meeting today." <laughs> so that's like, great, and that's how the, you know the brand started growing in in the mouth of the community, and eventually start spreading. A little mm -hmm. further and further and and now almost three years later we have customers from pretty much the whole uh uh central washington area coming in from bellevue linwood everett edmonds and uh camano island and uh, so on so it was it's pretty awesome to look back back now and see what was our beginning and what it is now yeah and, yeah that's really cool it's a fun journey Awesome. Yeah. We're Still at the start, I guess. Yeah, tough start, but uh, I think all the dedication that we put in, all the the, the hours, the work, uh, it's been paying off. And uh, we were very blessed with the location, um, with the customers, the community. Couldn't be any any better. You know, it's uh, it was meant to be. Awesome. Good. Good. Well, yeah, I want to touch on. Uh, just how your how your brand started to grow there. You know, there's a lot I could get into. I'm really curious about your whole story there and the details behind all of that um, and all the elements that went into your growth. Really curious there. But we could save that conversation for another time. Um, but just in terms of growing your brand specifically, I'd be curious, did you consciously think much about 
what your brand was and what branding is um and if so you know what what did that look like in your mind um so when we set up the quest we wanted to have as a core a place that is that when you say bequest, the first thing that will come to people's mind is uh, like good products, great service. That's the mm-hmm. first two words that I look to bring to people whenever bequest is mentioned or whenever they think about my my shop, right? Um, and I even joke around and I say that we are not in the uh, that we are not in the coffee business. We are in the people business, serving coffee, right? Because uh, um, we train every all of our employees, everybody that works with us to always try to make the best out of the customer service experience and provide always the best we can and um, align with, of course, good products, good vibe, good experience. But I would say that one of the main reasons for um, for success right now, it's been uh, the the customer service and and how uh, the consistency of our products and and food align with that. Um, so basically, that is the main course of Bequest. That's what I believe the brand stands for. Uh, equal place where everybody could uh, can be welcome um, and 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 relax and enjoy their time with their families with their uh, uh, and enjoy good good coffee of course um the thing is like in seattle we are in the uh like i have a friend that he's really into uh into soccer and he said like dude seattle is like the premier league of coffee all the good coffee shops are around <laughs> here so i mean you open a coffee shop and you success you're playing the high league you know it's not like yeah for sure so um yeah it's competitive that's for sure yeah so and i mean especially where we are we have other coffee shops around but i believe that right. we all can can coexist because even though we are in, like in the sale we're serving coffee but we are offered different vibes different environments for people right mm-hmm. so um our customers usually they're not kind of at the same vibe usually um, yeah so it's it, it is yeah. nice so that's where i see big quest right yeah. now yeah that's awesome yeah so did you so you know, all of that is is your brand. Um, did you think about it in those terms? Did you think about, you know, how do we want to brand? Or did you mostly just focus on this is who we want to be as a business and the idea of even the terminology brand never came across your mind? Not really. I mean, um, we try to focus a lot like on, on what we want to bequest to represent and um and try to keep that alive uh on everybody that comes to work with us and yeah um for them to adapt to that as well and because one of our plans and that is from day one um even before actually we opened the shop we always wanted to grow our business as well right so uh that's why we have this next location coming coming up and eventually we wanted to have a third, fourth location, and and so on. I mean, not a lot, but I mean, um, plan is to keep growing as yeah, much as we can handle case. without losing, of course, like you said, the, the core. Um, right. So that's where we usually the majority of their thoughts are on there. Like, what do we want Bequest to be, even on a bigger scale, right? We don't want it to open a second location and then start losing quality. Right, the, like uh, having our standards dropping or anything like this. We want to keep level in all the mental shops that we that we uh, open. Yeah, yeah. So if you know if that if that's your what you've been able to do is is establish you know a strong idea of who Bequest is is really what you're saying with good, with good products and good service. Um, and you guys have obviously been able to do that. Um, you know, you have you have the opportunity to keep growing here. It's obvious just being around there. Um, and so, I guess, what what have you done to establish that reputation? What has it mostly been? Is there a, a prominent thing that comes to mind in terms of 
um, what was most effective in helping you guys establish that reputation. And you've touched on, obviously, the actual experience people get when they walk in the door. Is there anything you've done in terms of um, reaching new people with that to establish that reputation? Yeah, I mean, we uh, first, I think, is uh, we always been present. Um, and, and that's a thing that, that um, I believe is uh, very important too. Like we're always trying to um, be there, talk with people, uh, with the new employees to have a, a very like one-on-one -on -one training where we explain how important that is and, um, and it, the values of Bequest or um, basically the mission of Bequest. And secondly, I remember we were very um, like we were listening to what the community had to say about us. We are not like like we try to be very aware of what people mm. were looking for and what would please certain that community. And so, and what were you what were you hearing? So I remember like we we had like a. A, uh, like a, a, a menu that we set up for the business and then a lot of people let's say for for example a lot of people start coming to our shop and looking for more vegan uh, gluten-free uh, options of food that they have we don't have that a lot around here like if you guys could right. do it that would be awesome so like okay we'll see what we can do and boom yeah. a, a line of products gluten-free vegan start coming around and uh, and nowadays we we offer that options for people. Unfortunately, it's not as many as we do for the regular pastries and food. But I mean, they're good, they're homemade, and they're fresh every day. So uh, yeah. and it's nice because you go to a coffee shop and you tell them what you are looking for and what you think it needs, and then a few weeks go by, and then you sit there, it feels like it feels good for you. You feel important, like well, they actually listen to what I wanted, and then. A whole bunch of other people that are in the same situation that they have um, food restrictions and stuff will be also pleased with that. So that is one case, for instance, um, some flavors for drinks where people would say to us, like, oh, that's so good. You guys should carry that. And then we develop a whole uh, uh, line of items that are homemade for the coffee, like syrups, homemade syrups and 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 the list goes on like we were always trying to be aware of uh what we could improve you know always trying to raise the bar yeah. and 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 do better and and that's where what i associate like i said bequest success to yeah yeah definitely just <laughs> listening to the customers and not saying realizing you know we've been saying no we don't have that a lot maybe we should maybe we should get that um yeah. yeah, I think it, it just sounds like you guys have a huge, huge focus on the customer, and that comes through in every every part of what you guys are doing. Um, mm -hmm. So it makes a lot of sense. So, what's next for you guys in terms of, you know, and and in terms of establishing the the brand that you want when what when people think of Bequest. Um, mm -hmm. And you want to give them a specific picture in your mind, in their minds. Uh, what's next for you guys to be able to continue to grow your reputation, grow your brand in the area? Um, I believe we, we should, like I said, we should keep doing what we doing. Is showing like a, a good recipe for uh, for success and to please the people. Um, we always try to learn like new recipes, new methods of uh, brewing coffee or baked goods. Um, so I think, like I said, keep raising the bar, keep trying to provide the best um, is always what we gonna aim for. Um, our main uh, focus right now, it's been on, on um, growing the business, with uh, we have this uh, second location coming up in Madison and Seattle right. Capitol Hill. So, uh, and with that coming the challenge of uh, surround yourself by people that uh, have the same vision as you do for the mm -hmm. business. So um, we wanted to 
kind of find a way to have them to find the same passion we did a few years back when we started in this business. Mm. Uh, one of our um, so are you are you franchising? Not franchising, no. But that that's what I was going to get into right now. One of the yeah. uh, careers opportunity we offer employees is that if they come to work for us and they show good work and they show passion, we eventually for the next shops to come, we offer them some kind of a partnership mm. for the shops where they can manage and be part owners of that specific location, right? Yeah. It's great. Which, is, which is like because I don't want them to feel what I felt when I was working at the shop where at some point there was the manager and there was nowhere else to go. Mm. Yeah. And so basically that I think I, putting myself in their shoes where if my boss had that opportunity for me, I would probably still be working for him mm. and we would have grown on the brand because you need to surround yourself with people that have the same vision and passion to you. because. Right. You, you cannot do everything by yourself because you might be good at uh, A and B, but the other person is good at C and D, and you have to find a way to align that so you can uh, you both can grow, right? So I think that's uh, uh, that's a huge opportunity for people that are looking to establish themselves in the coffee business, in the customer service business, like the restaurant business. Um, like I said, uh, so that's is where I see uh, bequests. Uh, walking towards, um, you know, we'll see what the future will bring for yeah. for us. That's awesome. That's really exciting. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, Vinny. Uh, really helpful, and really just love your your. It's obvious your where your focus is. You're pretty drilled in into just making sure you guys provide great service and and great products, like you said, and it's evident in the the work is speaking for itself and bringing new people in the door so that's awesome yeah no it's like i said it's good i mean looking for where we start you know beginning of covid and b new business and now we are like open the second location that's is a we feel very, very proud of all the work we have done uh we're very grateful to god because without him not of this would be possible so um yeah, absolutely yeah, so we, like I said, we are excited to see what the future will bring to Bequest and and to us for our families, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, do a good job of medicine, provide great food and customer service for the community of Seattle and eventually to other communities when new Bequests come along. Yep. Yeah, love it. That's great. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Vinny. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it, man. You guys have a yeah, good day. Yeah, of course. Thanks for listening to Work Is Good. If you enjoyed it, share it, leave a review, and listen next week.